Hey guys, I am so excited today to show you this Pottery Barn dupe. I have been looking at this pillow on Pottery Barn for a couple years now. And so I actually already had both of these fabrics. I actually had all the fabric that I've used in this project and the thread. So I didn't have to go out and buy anything. So I hope that you'll follow along and you can make your own flag. So our pillow. Pottery Barn pillow that I'm trying to duplicate is 16 by 26. And this is my insert, so I just wanna make sure that this really is 16 by 26 before I start cutting my fabric. So let's check that out. 16, 26. Okay, we're good. Now we can go ahead and start cutting our fabric. So I just cut off the raw edge of the fabric and the stars portion of my pillow, I am going to cut 16 by nine. I'm not gonna add any additional for seam allowance because I want my pillow to be nice and snug. You could if you want to, uh, you could add up to an inch if you want just some extra room in there, but I'm going to cut this piece 16 by nine. So here's the stripes fabric. I got both of these fabrics from Walmart, um, but I'm sure that you could find patterns like this pretty much anywhere. So with the stripes, the stripes on the pillow were going this way. So I need to make sure that when I'm cutting this fabric, I am cutting it so that the 16 um, is from here to here. And then from the width wise, I'm going to do 17 inches. This is the and fabric that I'm gonna use for the back of the pillow. It's just a solid white color. I'm gonna do an envelope back on the pillow. So I need to add to my fabric to make sure that I have enough fabric to do the envelope. So how I'm gonna do that is to my width, which our width of our pillow is 26 inches, I'm gonna add five inches. So that gives us 31 inches. And so one piece I'm going to make the width 16 and the other piece I'm gonna make the width 15. And I'm gonna continue having my height at the same 16, 16 inches as I did with the other fabric. So this piece was so big, just like the other pieces and with the camera here, it was just kind of a struggle to um, get it cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these two pieces cut down. Again, I'm cutting one piece 16 by 16 and the other piece 16 by 15. Okay, so I've been sewing on these, um, these stitches, these lines here that just give that added extra detail. And you can kind of play with this on a scrap piece of fabric and see what you like. Um, I had put, I don't know if you can see, this really faint line um, on with a fabric pencil. And then I followed that. But I found that if I keep my presser foot um, just about right here, that I get this, um, you know, the, the same size on both sides because you need to do um, a red stitch on the white and you need to do a white stitch on the red. So I have almost all of them done. I just have a couple more to go. So I thought I would try to show you, hopefully, hopefully you can see this. Let's see. Okay, and there we have the red stitching on there. Okay, okay, so I have all of my lines um, stitching done on my, um, my stripe portion. 
of the pillow. So now it's time that I need to put these two pieces together. And um, I will be honest and say that when I was measuring this out, I did not take into consideration for the seam allowance that needed to go here. However, when I uh, measured everything across, I'm about a half inch over. Um, so I'm still good. So that's something you'll want to uh, keep in mind if you're making this is that you do want to take into consideration a little bit of a seam allowance for this seam. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to match the two um, good sides together and pin them. And then take them over to my sewing machine and sew them together. Okay, now we need to work on the back part of the pillow. This is the envelope part. And so we have these two pieces that are gonna be coming together. And on each side of those pieces, we need to have a finished edge. So all I'm going to do, and you just have to keep in mind that you wanna make sure you're 16 inches going this way. And on this piece, it's 16 inches wide. And on the other piece, it's 15 inches wide. Um, so just, um, it gets a little tricky because those measurements are pretty close together and you want to make sure you're you're doing the right edge. So this is the inside edge on this piece and all I'm going to do is fold it over about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to iron it and then I'm just going to run a stitch down through there. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so now it's time for us to put the front pieces and the back piece, well, the front piece and the back pieces together. And then we can sew it all together and then we'll have our pillow done. So we have to make sure that we remember to uh, do the right sides together. So this is my front. And here's a back piece. Now what's kind of nice with this, because remember, our two back pieces are gonna be bigger than our front piece, is that I can use the stripe to really try to get this straight. And then what I'm gonna do is use this Elmer's glue. It's just the stick of glue. And it actually goes on purple, but then it dries clear. I am just going to go around the edges and put this on the edge. I'm gonna put the top down and then I'm gonna to go to my iron, iron it all and then do a stitch all the way around. So the reason why I'm doing it this way is because then I don't have to get stuck by pins, which is kind of nice. It looks messy, but it's going to clean up no problem. I'm gonna to go to the iron, iron this on just around the edges. It just keeps everything tight until I get it to the um, sewing machine and get it sewn. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side, iron it, and then actually go to the sewing machine and sew it all the way around. The other thing you want to remember is to have your your seams, you know, your, um, your edges on the inside here 
that you already sewn so you have that nice clean edge on your inside. Okay, so again, I'm going to take it over to my ironing board. I'm going to iron around this edge and then we'll take it to the sewing machine. So here we have it. I've sewn around the whole entire edge. Um, and I will say I've used the glue before and it's worked really well for me. It's nice not to be jabbed with the pins um, and it just really stays together nice. It gives you a nice seam, but you can always use the pins. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just a, something that I like to do. So at this point, I'm just going to go around the edge, trim up just a little bit where there's some excess, do a little cutting at an angle at the corner. And then I'm going to turn this inside out and do one final ironing before I put, um, put it in the insert. 